fairies, those mystical and mischievous creatures of folklore, have captivated human imagination for centuries. These ethereal beings have fluttered through our stories, danced in our gardens, and sprinkled magic dust in our dreams. But what exactly are fairies? Where did they come from? And why do they continue to enchant us in the modern world? Let's embark on a whimsical journey through the realm of the Fae, exploring their rich history, diverse folklore, and enduring presence in popular culture. Before we dive into the world of fairies, let's first address the spelling conundrum. You've likely encountered both fairy, F-A-I-R-Y, and fairy, F-A-E-R-I-E, in your readings and perhaps wondered about the difference. The word F-A-I-R-Y comes from the old French F-A-E-R-I-E, which itself derived from Fay, F-A-E or F-A-Y, meaning enchanted or bewitched. The spelling F-A-E-R-I-E is considered more archaic and is often used to evoke a sense of antiquity or authenticity in fantasy literature. The variation Fay, F-A-E, is also commonly used, especially in modern fantasy writing, as a collective noun for fairy kind. Fairies aren't just a European phenomenon. Similar mythical creatures exist in cultures worldwide. Let's take a tour of fairy folklore across the globe. In Irish mythology, the She are a supernatural race akin to fairies. They're often associated with the Tuatha de Nanan, a mythical people said to have inhabited Ireland before humans. These beings are typically portrayed as tall, beautiful and skilled in magic. The Norse cosmos included realms inhabited by light elves and dark elves. While not exactly fairies, these beings share many characteristics with the Fae of other traditions. Slavic, fairy-like creatures include the Rusalki, often depicted as the spirits of young women who died near water, and Vilas, beautiful nymph-like beings with power over nature. While not precisely fairies, many Japanese yokai, supernatural beings, share similarities with Western fairies. Tengu, for example, are mischievous mountain spirits, while Kitsune, are magical fox spirits known for their shape-shifting abilities. Many Native American tribes have stories of little people, small magical beings who often interact with humans. These vary widely between cultures, but often share traits with European fairy lore. For example, the Menominee people of the Great Lakes region tell of the Memenguesi, small, hairy humanoids that live in forests and lakes. Like European fairies, these beings often possess magical abilities and inhabit hidden realms. Leprechauns, originally a type of solitary fairy in Irish folklore, have become internationally recognised symbols of Ireland. The word likely derives from the Irish leprechaun, meaning small body, and I probably said that wrong, traditionally depicted as little bearded men in green attire. They're known for their craftsmanship as shoemakers, hidden pots of gold, and clever, often mischievous nature. In popular culture, leprechauns have diverse representations. The 1968 film Finian's Rainbow presented a sympathetic leprechaun character, blending Irish folklore with American themes. In modern pop culture, the Lucky Charms serial mascot, the Leprechaun horror film series, St. Patrick's Day celebrations. In contemporary media, TV series like Lost Girl incorporate leprechauns into urban fantasy settings. Eoan Colfer's Artemis Fowl books reimagine them as fairy police officers. In medieval and early modern Europe, fairies were often viewed as potentially dangerous beings. They were sometimes associated with the dead or fallen angels, occupying a morally ambiguous space, neither fully good nor evil. These fairies were capable of mischievous or even malevolent act, such as kidnapping children, often leaving changelings in their place, leading travellers astray, 
creating the phenomenon of pixie lead, causing illness or misfortune, stealing livestock or crops. People would often leave offerings or perform rituals to appease these capricious beings and avoid their wrath. The Romantic Shift During the Romantic period, the portrayal of fairies underwent a dramatic transformation. Artists and writers began reimagining them as tiny winged creatures, often benevolent and closely connected to nature. This shift coincided with a growing interest in folklore and a romanticization of rural life. Key aspects of this transformation included size. Fairies became diminutive, often small enough to hide in flowers. Appearance. They were increasingly depicted with insect-like wings, enhancing their connection to nature. Temperament. The new fairies were generally helpful and kind, though they could still be mischievous. And habitat. It was strongly associated with natural settings, especially forests and gardens. Victorian era and beyond. The Victorian era saw an explosion of fairy-related art and literature. This period cemented the modern image of fairies in popular culture. Notable examples include Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. While written earlier, it gained new popularity. J.M. Barry's Peter Pan introducing the now iconic Tinkerbell. The fascination with fairies extended beyond literature. The famous Cottingley Fairies hoax of 1917 where two young girls convinced many, including Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, that they had photographed real fairies, demonstrates the enduring allure of these magical beings, even in the face of modern scepticism. This reimagining of fairies has had a lasting impact on popular culture. From Disney movies to modern fantasy literature, the Romantic era conception of fairies as whimsical nature-connected beings continues to captivate audiences. The fairy core aesthetic in fashion and decor, with its emphasis on flowy fabrics, pastel colors and gossamer wings, is a contemporary manifestation of this long-standing fairy fascination. In summary, the Romantic period marked a pivotal shift in the perception of fairies transforming them from potentially dangerous entities to enchanting, whimsical beings that continue to spark imagination through art, literature and popular culture. Fairies have sluttered through the pages of countless books from ancient myths to modern bestsellers. Here's a brief overview of some notable fairy featuring literature. Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, 1595-96 this play features Oberon and Titania, the king and queen of the fairies, and the mischievous sprite Puck. J.M. Barry's Peter Pan from 1904. Tinkerbell, perhaps the most famous fairy in modern literature, made her debut in this classic tale. Terry Pratchett's Lords and Ladies, 1992. Part of the Discworld series, this novel offers a darker, more dangerous portrayal of elves essentially fairies by another name. Eon Colfer's Artemis Fowl series from 2001 to 2012. These books reimagine fairies as technologically advanced beings living underground. Holly Black's The Modern Fairy Tale series from 2002 to 2007. These young adult novels blend urban fantasy with traditional fairy lore. While we've covered many types of fairies, there are a few iconic fairy characters that deserve special mention. The Sugar Plum Fairy. This character from Tchaikovsky's ballet, The Nutcracker, has become one of the most recognizable fairy figures in classical arts. The Sugar Plum Fairy rules over the land of sweets and performs the famous dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. Her ethereal music and graceful dance have made her a symbol of holiday magic and balletic elegance. The Fairy Godmother A staple of many fairy tales, most famously in Cinderella, the Fairy Godmother represents benevolent magical intervention. She typically appears to aid the protagonist in their time of need, using her magic to transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. 
The phrase fairy godmother has entered common language to describe anyone who in unexpectedly provides help or support. The Blue Fairy Featured prominently in Carlo Collodi's The Adventures of Pinocchio and its many adaptations, including Disney's animated classic, the Blue Fairy is a powerful and benevolent figure. She brings Pinocchio to life and later guides him on his journey to become a real boy. The Blue Fairy embodies wisdom, nurturing guidance and the power of transformation. Here are some notable fairy appearances in film and television. Disney's Sleeping Beauty from 1959. The three good fairies, Flora, Fauna and Merryweather, play crucial roles in this animated classic. Hook from 1991. In this live action sequel to Peter Pan, Julia Roberts portrays Tinkerbell. Her performance brought a new dimension to the character, presenting a more complex and emotionally nuanced fairy than previous incarnations. Robert's star power also helped to reintroduce fairies to a mainstream audience. Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest from 1992. This animated film features Krista, a fairy fighting to save her forest home. Fairy Tale, A True Story, 1997. Based on the Cottingley Fairies incident, this film explores the boundary between belief and reality. The Lord of the Rings trilogy, 2001-2003. While called elves, Tolkien's ethereal beings share many characteristics with traditional fairies. True Blood, from 2008 to 2014. This HBO series features fairies as a major plot element, portraying them as powerful, otherworldly beings. Lost Girl, from 2010 to 2015. This Canadian supernatural crime drama series features a succubus who discovers she's part of a hidden world of fey creatures. This show explores various types of fey from different mythologies, offering a unique blend of urban fantasy and fairy lore. Maleficent from 2014. This film reimagines the classic Sleeping Beauty story with Angelina Jolie playing a powerful fairy. From the mischievous sprites of folklore to the glittering sidekicks in Disney movies, fairies have proven to be one of the most enduring and adaptable concepts in human culture. They fluttered from ancient myths to modern bestsellers, from art galleries to garden decorations, always changing yet somehow remaining essentially the same. Whether you see them as literal beings, metaphors for natural forces, or simply charming flights of fancy, fairies continue to sprinkle a little magic into our lives. In a world that can often seem all too mundane, perhaps we all need a touch of fairy dust now and then, a reminder that wonder and mystery still exist, if only we have the eyes to see them. So the next time you spot an unexplained shimmer out of the corner of your eye, or feel an inexplicable sense of magic in a moonlit garden, who knows, maybe, just maybe, you've had a brush with the fairy realm. Just remember to be polite. In fairy tales, good manners go a long way.